The biggest pain point for patients is always initially the diagnostic journey. Uh, and sometimes we call it the diagnostic odyssey because it takes so long just to get diagnosed, just to understand what is the disease that's affecting me as a patient and mostly my kid as a patient. The field where, where you operate, it seems to be medical genomics. So what it is and now uh, is relevant towards detecting diseases. I often uh, consider the, the space that we work as an intersection between genomics, artificial intelligence, precision medicine, and given these you know, recent days and, and recent time, also telehealth, uh, which is becoming more and more an issue that we're, we're seeing addressed in the market. But when you look at medical genetics, yes, the, the main idea is diagnosing and at some point also treating, but mainly diagnosing patients that have rare genetic disorders. Most of them are born with uh, these genetic disorders. Most of these diseases are chronic. They encompass many different underlying symptoms and other medical conditions. And that's the space. That's where we're doing. When we talk about rare diseases, um, can you give us a sense of what it means? Uh, like an example of what a rare disease is? So first of all, it's a legal de definition, and it, and it changes between different countries. But uh, if we're looking at the common denominator of what is a rare disease, it is that it affects fewer than X number of people in that country, right? So it could be less than one in every 10,000 or less than a uh, nominal number. So that's the definition of a rare disease. Coincidentally, there is a huge overlap between rare diseases and diseases that are caused by uh, genetic mutations or genetic variations. We estimate that about 80% of rare diseases are actually caused by a mutation in the DNA of that person. Some are uh, mutations that occur spontaneously. Some are inherited by you know, the genes that we get from our parents. Uh, and some rare diseases are not caused by genetics at all, but could be caused by substance abuse during pregnancy and other causes. Uh, our focus is, is mainly on that group of diseases that is both rare and caused by genetics. So how many, in general, how many rare diseases uh, exist? How many people are impacted, for example, in the United States, in Europe? And um, what are the pain points right now today? Like what, what is problematic today with, with these diseases? So we call this the rarity paradox, right? These, each disease in itself is rare. Uh, and we can find diseases that impact one in several hundreds of thousands of people born. But when you aggregate them into a group, the total addressable market or the impact is uh, close to one in 10 people. It can be one in eight people, one in 10 people. We generally talk about about 30 million Americans and 30 million Europeans that have rare diseases. And I think the biggest pain point, well, well there are two, but the biggest pain point for patients is always initially the diagnostic journey. Uh, and sometimes we call it the diagnostic odyssey because it takes so long just to get diagnosed, just to understand what is the disease that's affecting me as a patient and mostly my kid as a patient? So that's the first challenge that every new patient and every family that's introduced into this world is feeling. And it's a very frustrating journey. It takes a toll and a burden, both financially and emotionally. And I think the second part of that journey is once that patient is being diagnosed, okay, what can we do about it? commonly talk about about 7,000 known rare diseases. There are probably twice as much that are unknown yet. But only about 5% of these diseases have an FDA-approved treatment. So most of the patients that we're going to help diagnose are going to be left with a diagnosis and nothing to do about it in terms of therapeutics. Now, there are other implications, right? How do I manage the care of my child? What should I expect? What is the prognosis? What kind of support can I get? And how can I improve the quality of life for the patient? 
maybe in some cases, are there any clinical trials available and drugs in the pipeline in development? So it's really about kind of bridging the knowledge gap and being able to support both the patient and the family.